Hey team, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at user-defined data types. I'm going to show you how to create it and how to consume it in functions and programming in general. And then I'm going to give you some of the pitfalls of using this amazing feature. Please stick around and I'll show you everything you need to know about the user-defined data types. Let's look at user-defined data types. They're also known as UDTs. We're going to create a new data type called USD. And we're going to make it look like decimal 9 comma 2. So let's create this data type. Create type, the name, from. This is the base data type. And this is kind of like the alias name looking at this. Once you create it, you can come over to the Object Explorer Go down to Program Abilities, Types, User Defined Types. Let's refresh that. And notice now we have our USD Decimal 92. And that's how you create it. Now, if you want to remove a user defined data types, you can do it as long as it's not being used in the system. So you can say the command drop type and the name of the type. Refresh. And notice it's gone now. So that's how you create it and remove it. Now we can go through system type, sys types, and get a list of all of our types that are in the system. Or we can just modify it just a little bit and just get the one row that we're interested about. And this is USD. You can see that we just created that. It is is user defined as one. One is true. So we have created a user defined data type and now I would like to be able to use it creating a table. So create table, table name. I've got ID as an integer. It's a identity column. And now I have cost and cost is USD. Now, before I had USD available, I would have to have said 9 comma 2. But now I have USD. I can just use that data type. This is a user-defined data type. I'm going to create a table. Notice that that was successful. And I can come up here to my tables, hit refresh. And notice now I have test USD and our cost USD decimal 9 comma 2. So this is what it will look like when you're using a user-defined data type. Here you can see I'm doing some data inserts into a table that we just created and I can select it. So you can see that there's no problems inserting data into a table using a user-defined data type. Now I've created several more data types just so you see some examples. So here I'm saying create type currency code type. So you can go out and look at ISO 4217 and you can see that all of these code types have three characters. And they're all using very simple alphabetic ASCII values. So I said create this currency code type as a char3. Okay, now imagine this new data type called US Social Security number type. So this is your Social Security pattern. Nine numbers plus two dashes is a total of 11 characters. So I called it a varchar 11. Now why did I use a variable length on this? Well, sometimes I know people only like to give their last four, so between 4 and 11. The next one is, I, I call it GUID. I'm a C programmer, and this is the word I know it by. So it's kind of cool to be able to use the same unique identifier, but call it by GUID. And this is what that value looks like. And here you can see I'm creating another type called yes, no. And it's a char 1. And you can imagine the values either being a yes or no. Now for each of these, I could have created at the table level a default value 
and a check constraint you know, using these UDTs, and that's where I would do that. So some examples on using this. Notice that I can say declare. Here's my variable, and notice all variables begin with the at symbol. Decimal 9 comma 2. Well, that was the old way of doing it. We've learned how to use UDTs. So it's USD. And notice I will execute this, and it behaves exactly as we predicted, just like decimal 9 comma 2. In this second example, notice that I'm have another variable, but here I'm just going to use math, and this works exactly as decimal 9 comma 2. Now on this one right here, we're going to say declare px as type USD, and we know that that's 9 comma 2. So 9 comma 2 means total of 9 characters. Two of them are decimal. So when you say 2 here, notice I have 3, it will do rounding. So this will go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, dot 1, 3. There's our. And of course, if we come up here and say 8, that will fail. Even if I take off all of the decimal. Has to be 7 over here. So it's kind of 7, 2 is the, the deal with that. What about with negative numbers? Does this exceed the 7, 2 requirement? No. The sign is just part of the number. It's either positive or negative. It's not part of the number. So far, we have created a new type called USD. We then created a table that consumed that new type. We inserted data into this table that we just created. And I've shown you how to create UDTs just in general. I believe you should have enough experience to proceed. But this is where things can get messy. Sometimes, as a database person, we define something as decimal uh, 9 comma 2. And we're thinking this is what we need always. But in the real world, changes happen. You know, 9, 2, that used to be the norm that it could put money into. Now we need 11, 2. You know, people are making, you know, billions and trillions of dollars. We need more places. So we have created a data type called USD. That may be consumed in 30 tables. But the problem that we just discovered is you cannot alter this data type. Watch this. It fails. It's like, I don't know how to do this command. So this is a real problem. And as you see here, UDTs are not updatable. Now, once I have consumed a data type, I cannot drop that. I can't drop it and then recreate it as something else. This right here will also fail. So to get around this is a big job. You can imagine creating another column called USD2, taking the data from USD1 into the USD2 column and doing that. But imagine that's going to be a lot of work. So you have to be careful and kind of think ahead when you're using a user defined data type. You can see here at the sys types level on how I went in there and figured out, you know, what is the UDT name and then what is the base name. You can see here that USD is based on decimal. So of course, we can figure out the size and all that from our database, which is very cool. Now, what if you wanted to create this new data type from an existing UDT? 
I'm sorry, friends, this doesn't work either. Notice the base type USD is not valid. So only base types are allowed here. And there you have it, UDTs, User Defined Data Types. Hey, thank you for taking the time to view this video. I truly appreciate it. You know, if you have any questions or have comments, please leave them below. It's great for me and for other students. And of course, if you found this video informative and you feel like I need a thumbs up, show other users that this is a good video, I'd appreciate that. And lastly, you know, subscribing is very helpful in the YouTube environment. I surely would appreciate it if you would subscribe. Thank you.